Welcome to another edition of Union County Conversation. I'm your host, Meg McElwain. This is a program that helps you understand Union County government and its services. We developed this program to help you understand better where your tax dollars go in providing services to the residents of Union County. Joining me today are Jackie Morgan and Philip Tart, both with the Public Health Program here in Union County. And they're going to talk to us today about the uh, Public Health Preparedness Program. Thank you both for joining us today and taking time to come into the courthouse studio. Jackie, why don't you start by telling me about your role with Union County Public Health? I'm the Health Promotion Supervisor. I do accreditation for the agency, the Community Health Assessment, and supervise several grant-funded programs, one of them being the Public Health Preparedness Bioterrorism Program. Great. Um, I'm the Division Director for Public Health, have been for several years now. We uh, have environmental health, clinical services, preparedness, health promotions. So one of you tell me a little bit about the Health Preparedness Program. What is it? and you know, what, what, does, what would you like the public to know about this program? I'll take a stab at that. We, um, public health has, has become really instrumental in preparing folks in communities around North Carolina for events of uh, whether they be terrorism or disease or just other misfortunes. And what public health does is we are at the forefront of making sure that medications and services are provided to the individuals and communities. Um, that lessens the burden of these illnesses and diseases. Uh, one of the great things about this program is that there is some, uh, the state and the federal government sees quite a bit of value in this and we're able to head off a disease or an incident before it gets out of hand. That's one thing that's uh, very good about this program. Now, how is it funded? Uh, this particular program is, is primarily funded through state and federal money. The feds, federal government has um, programs through CDC and other avenues that they pass through the state, and the state passes that money down to local counties, uh, depending on population size. And now, when you say health, a public health preparedness program, tell me what type of event um, might put a plan of this nature into action? I'll take that one. Okay. Um, well, we have what's called our SNS plan, which is the tr strategic national stockpile. And in the event of a bioterrorism, a, a terroristic attack on the county, Mr. Tart would then um, place a call to the CDC and would request medication for the county. And it would be our job under preparedness to provide prophylax for the entire county within 48 hours. And that clock starts as soon as he places that phone call. So the SNS plan is kind of the center point or focal point for the entire preparedness program. There would be other instances where we would provide maybe a supporting role like a hurricane or an ice storm or things like that because we do offer sheltering. It's not our, for our responsibility under FEMA, but we would provide a supporting role. And so who would you support? What, what other agencies? Under sheltering, it would be the Red Cross. It's their sheltering operation, but we provide um, medical assistance and physical assistance for someone that has a special or functional need within that sheltering environment. So it sounds like when, you know, when and if something like this were to occur, it, it, it's not always just your agency that is involved in the response. But, but now tell me a little bit about how your plan, when you develop your plan, do you coordinate with other agencies or do they have their own individual uh, emergency plans? Well, for us, we always like to tap into their plan. We have our own plan of how we're going to uh, activate our own staff and how we're going to activate our volunteers. Each one of these individuals that she mentions, the Red Cross, they already have their plan in place and what particular component they're going to conduct. Um, but we meet and collaborate and coordinate with those particular units to make sure that our plans coincide with their plans. Um, and we're not stepping on toes because what we have to do is make sure that we get, for instance, if we had a we, if we had a, a anthrax incident and we need to get antibiotics out there, we've got a finite amount of time to get this done, and we've got 220,000 people to get this uh, to get this through. So we rely on them heavily to understand what their role is and what our role is, and we're not stepping on toes. Uh, so we can process those people through as quickly as possible. Right. So now you've mentioned several of the um, of the services that 
you would provide in a plan of this nature, like medication, dispensing medication. Um, give me some other examples of things that you, actions that you would take. Um, well, one of, the, one of the items we talked about, obviously, is medications. If we were to have a situation where we had a pandemic flu issuance and we had um, to get uh, antivirals to people. Another might be sheltering, as Jackie mentioned before, that uh, if we had a situation that we needed special needs sheltering or we were called in to shelter, we don't do sheltering, but should we be called upon, then we would activate our plan and have those individuals that, that are employed by Union County Public Health to, to be part of that sheltering opportunity. And what they would do is they would be in shifts and enough to cover the, the time that's needed until the disaster or the event's over. Right, because once you activate a plan, someone has to, is essentially on call. Somebody's got to be there all the time. And that's, that's one of the things I think that we pride ourselves in is, is exercising and practicing these plans and making sure that um, if an event were to happen, that we know who's responsible to do what task. Um, but you're right, once it's called, it's called, and you're there until the duration. So let me, let me ask you this question. Um, when, let's say, as far as staffing a situation like this, would it only be county staff, or do you ever bring in volunteers from the community, or is that, is that probably, may, you know, I don't know how that works as far well, we've as talked about if that they're trained or not trained. <clears throat> We've talked about that a lot. What, what we want to make sure is that anyone that comes into a sheltering uh, or, or an event uh, situation is, is trained. If they can't do training for, for them prior to, we can do a just-in-time readiness training. With that just-in-time training, we, we, um, we dictate and determine what their responsibilities are going to be. We train them in a shorter period of time, and then they're activated in their role. We don't normally take um, volunteers, but with some of these other agencies like a, a Red Cross or any... Um, a facility that might loan uh, nursing out, for instance, uh, we would do. We would usually do some just-in-time training for them. Now, if we know we're going to work with them prior to, we're certainly going to incorporate them into the training. Um, but worst-case scenario, we do our best to make sure that they're ready to go when they get there. And we don't put them in. Usually, you wouldn't put them in roles that they weren't capable of, and, and wouldn't put them in roles in, in something that they could not, uh, they couldn't accomplish. So we make sure of that. Right. Maybe have someone there just helping check people in, Correct. that type of thing, instead of actually administering medication or Correct. things of yeah. that nature. Now, t um, paint a picture of what a training or a, uh, maybe a mock, a mock event would look like. You want to talk about some sure. of the training? Sure. Um, we have two pieces of the SNS plan, which would be like what he was referring to with the anthrax situation. We have what's called a pod, which is our point of dispensing, and that's staffed by our clinical staff as well as our business services staff. And that would involve the triage, the taking of the um, health forms with the history, and then the dispensing of the medicine. But before the medicine gets to the pod, it has to go through what's called our, our LRS, our local receiving site. And that's staffed by our environmental health services staff. And that's where they intake the medicine from the CDC and break it down into the size um, dosages that would be given out in the pod. So we did exercise a year ago in March our LRS. And we did a mock where they brought in boxes that would simulate what would come in through CDC. And then we set up the different areas within the LRS to practice how the flow would go through the LRS into the pod. And we'll be having a drill in March on the pod setup with our clinical staff. So we do exercise those. Um, on a regular basis and are hoping, obviously, to learn more each time we do that and see where we can strengthen our plan. I think that's wonderful that you all um, do those training sessions and that you, it sounds like you do them annually mm -hmm. or um, almost annually. Um, now, let me ask, um, when you, um, you've mentioned the anthrax, you've mentioned other, but what would you say would be, what, what would you say is the biggest threat to Union County as far as the need for an emergency preparedness? Do you think it would be like an, a medical epidemic or a terrorist attack, or, or is can you even say? Well, for me, I still think it's I still think it's flu. Um, I still think pandemic flu is on the horizon, and we saw that in 2000, uh, late 2000s with S1, uh, H1N1 uh, with the swine flu. You know, fortunately for us, it didn't turn out to be as chaotic as we had anticipated, but I do think a lot of that came from the preparedness and the planning and the, um, the public awareness that took place from public health and all the way from the CDC down to the local public health departments about um, 
you know, proper hand washing, ensuring that you're out uh, in not in close proximity to people during these events and making sure you visit your physician if you were sick. It was getting ahead of it. And I think a lot of times when you do prevention and planning and it works well, a lot of times people, there's this concept, uh, there's this thought that, well, it was, really wasn't that big a deal. When there was a lot of behind the scenes work that took place to make sure that that event was sort of a non-event. But I do think it's pandemic uh, influenza, those types of not man-made or terrorist attacks. I think it's more of just the viruses and the bacterias that are floating in our, in our world today that could cause some havoc. Uh, I still think that that's some of our biggest problem. Not to say that the terrorist attacks aren't, aren't as right. Im important, but our proximity to Charlotte obviously adds a, a, another layer of uh, concern. Um, but in the event that that does happen, you know, we've been assured by the feds, the federal government, and the state when we get our pods in our, and, and our push packs and our points of distribution that we should be able to take care of our population. I think, was it 50 percent? They said at least 50 percent of the population should be, when a smallpox attack or a smallpox incident, for instance, there's enough anti, um, antivirals in the federal stockpile right now to take care of 50 percent of the American population. So when you, when you think about it in that context, um, as long as our plans are in place and their plans are in place, we should be well protected. But I do think it's these natural occurrences that are our biggest fear. Um, we've seen some resistance to antibiotics. Um, we're a very social uh, world now. Mm -hmm. uh, the malls are extremely full, if you've been lately. So it's easy to spread these. So it's just a matter of people taking care of themselves as much as they can. And that would mean hand washing? Tremendous. I think that that and staying away from people who are showing active signs of illness. Um, what are some other things? What other tips would you give? Well, I, I will. I'll go back to hand washing, and we could say that 15 times. I still think that's the most important thing you can possibly do. Um, and again, when you're sick, we encourage people um, stay home, don't spread it. Mm -hmm. um, ensure that you clean surfaces um, as much as possible. But it is that consistent hand washing, and more importantly, it's visiting your primary care physicians if at all possible. When you're sick, uh, don't take for granted that it's gonna, it, it will go away or that it's nothing. I mean, it could be a major incident that you are not taking care of yourself. So it's very important that people continue to do that and see those primary care doctors. But I can't emphasize enough, and I know I've said it three times, washing hands, it's so important. It is important, it's so important. and it's easy to do. It's, it's easy just to do. you just have to stop and take the time or even use the hand sanitizer that is now offered in so many public places. It's so many places. And I think for us in, in, in preparedness activities, I mean, preparedness is just that. It's about being prepared. It's about being ready for, for something to happen. And that comes with practice, time, prevention. That's what we do. We are in the prevention business. Um, if you get to the point to where you're already at that primary care stage, uh, you're beyond us. So we just want to make sure that you get to that point um, and you can prevent most of the illnesses that come your way, if at all possible. Well, thank you for coming in and for giving us this information about what public health is doing behind the scenes so that they don't necessarily have to be out taking care of people in a, an emergency situation. Um, I hope that you've learned as much as I have in this episode. And if you have any questions about the Public Health Division of Union County, you can visit uniontync.gov or you can call the number on your screen. Thank you and have a great day in Union County. Hi, I'm Emily Wamsley. I'm the Union County Public Health Preparedness Coordinator. And today we're taking a look at our trailers that we have. They are located at our county garage and they're stored here throughout the year. They contain equipment and supplies for our local points of dispensing, local receiving site, and sheltering events. And we have um, cots for sheltering, we have blankets, we have towels for our sheltering, and for our pods and LRS we have traffic control materials, we have office supplies, we have generators and lights, anything that may be needed in the event of a hurricane or a natural disaster or an outbreak or bioterrorism event.